football is right around the corner. Get in on the action with DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. And with the NFL returning, DraftKings is giving new customers $200 in free bets instantly when you bet $1 or more on any football game. Listen up because you don't want to miss this. Head to the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and place a bet of $1 or more on any week one game to receive $200 in free bets instantly. If Sportsbook is not yet available in your state, DraftKings still has huge cash prizes up for grabs all season long with their daily fantasy contest. And for week one, DraftKings is giving all new customers a free shot at a $1 million top prize. Nothing adds to the excitement of watching a game quite like having a free shot at a million dollar top prize. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use promo code TBPN to receive $200 in free bets when you place a $1 bet on any football game and get a free shot at a million top prize with your first deposit. That's promo code TBPN for a limited time only at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. Must be 21 or older, New Jersey, Indiana, or Pennsylvania only. New customers only. Minimum $5 deposit and $1 wager required. One per customer. Restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash Sportsbook for details. Gambling, gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or in Indiana, 1-800-9-WITH-IT. Listening to Spurs Cast, episode 627. My name is Paul Garcia, and I'm your host here on the Spurs Cast. Today, I'll be joined by Project Spurs founder Michael DeLeon. In this episode, Mike and I will discuss who is most likely to be traded or waived before the opening night of the season, Ben Simmons wanting out of Philadelphia, and the Spurs' cap space projection for next summer. Let's go to get started. Mike, how have you been? I'm good, man. I'm good. Glad to be back on. Talk. Um... What, I guess what little there is to talk about from hell right now, but I'm pretty sure it's going to get busier pretty soon. Yeah, I'm really surprised. You know, normally we always we used to go, um, you know, biweekly in the, in the in the off season. You know, when, when the Spurs weren't weren't having any games and it was just full off season. But but actually, there's been some topics that I could, they have I've been able to put together for some episodes here um, pretty consistently. The Spurs have found themselves um, in, in different rumors and, and, and um, you know notes and reports uh, lately. So let's go to begin Spurs cast listeners. Let's begin with the first topic, and it's uh the question is who is most likely to get waived or traded before opening night. So this past week, I was really trying to just narrow down. I wrote I wrote a piece on Project Spurs called um, you know off season questions for the Spurs, and one of the first quest- big questions I had was you know who's the most likely players to, to get waived or traded uh, before October eighteenth, which is when the Spurs have to get their roster down to fifteen NBA players and then two two way players. And so I, I came to the conclusion that it's it's, it's most likely going to be um, Thaddeus Young. Um, uh, Al Farouk Aminu and Chandler Hutchinson. Um, all and the reason why I, I say those two players is because obviously you know they don't have any experience with the team yet, and they're also all three on um, on on, on their, the last year of their deals. Uh, you know, and we've actually seen Young's name specifically in in different trade rumors already, which which you and I, Mike, will get into in a bit. Um, and you know, aside from Young, um, when you look at Profit X's projection of how the players are supposed to play next season, um, Aminu and Hutchinson are more so you know toward the end of the bench kind of players. Whereas Young, if the Spurs were to keep him, he he can be an impact starter according to their projection of profit x now something that's interesting though you know as, as i was you know listening to these 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 um thaddeus young trades trade rumors is that you know now that the spurs are over the cap it's going to be a little tricky for them to, to trade one of these players if they do go with the trade route the reason why is because now that they're over the cap they either have to find a team with a large enough trade exception to take in one of those players without taking back salary or the spurs have to basically build a package where they can take back some players you know they might get some picks obviously but again they would have to take take back some more players and then it kind of puts them back in a bind where they they might have two players again and then they have to get rid of those two players or, or you know or wave them or, or trade them so that that's what's kind of interesting so mike before we get into the specific thaddeus young rumors do you agree that those are the those three players are are the, the ones that are the most likely to either get waived or traded before the start of the regular season i mean it just seems like those are the ones that make the most sense because those are the players that uh came over in uh 
you know, deals that were really about moving pieces around and like, I mean, I, I, I think I've said before that I, I wouldn't mind it if, if Daddy's film stuck around, but obviously that's, it looks like that might not be an option, but for sure, um, Aminu and uh, Chandler Hudson, um, those are definitely, at, everybody else it seems like they've really gone out of the way to like add them or, you know, or like, like do you banks got the, um, Mm-hmm. In the contract extension or whatever it was, and, and everywhere else they signed, they were actually signed to like with the, you know, with the purpose of adding them to the roster. And so I think when they made the moves for uh, Hutchison and Aminu, I mean, those were just like you know, kind of throw-ins to make the salaries work. So um, that's like a close to fifteen million worth of salaries right there. But still, I mean, if, if anyone's going to be uh, a way to it, be them to. Uh, it would be ideal if they could be included in a trade, but um, that that's probably going to be uh, hard to do as well. Yeah, you know, um, picking up, picking up, um, uh, piggybacking off of what you just said there, um, something that's interesting, and again, this is, this is not, you know, it's just me looking at how, how the Spurs uh, sent out their press releases, was that when they sent the press releases that, you know, they traded for, for Thaddeus Young and Aminu and, and Chandler Hutchinson from, from, uh, from the Wizards, they actually didn't put their jersey numbers in there, whereas when they, when they acquired Doug McDermott and then they also signed other free agents, you know, Bryn Forbes and, and Jock Landale, they specifically put their jersey numbers, their new jersey numbers, in the press release. So again, you know, that doesn't mean anything, but it's it's just interesting that the three players that are most likely that we we think to get traded or, or waived are the three players that, that, that the Spurs didn't even um, you know put their jer- their, their New Jersey numbers um, in in the um, press release uh, out to the public. So again, that's just something to watch. So now let's get into the um, dive into the, the Thaddeus Young rumors because uh, as I mentioned you know, this past week, his name was in some trade rumors and it's been and his name has been in um, rumors before as well. So per Shamsharania Sharan, uh, of the Athletic, uh, he reported recently that the Phoenix Suns are one of the one of the contenders with interest in trading for Thaddeus Young. Um, he, you know, he didn't give any specifics on who would be in a package. Uh, but, you know, when you look at it, like I mentioned earlier, in order for the Spurs to to trade Young to a team that doesn't have a trade exception large enough to absorb him, you, the Spurs would have to be taking back some players to match salaries. And so I'm just looking at an example here of what a trade might look like. And that would maybe look like Dario Saric and Jalen Smith, uh, who reportedly the Suns are, are discussing with different teams. He basically, he's on the trading block, Jalen Smith. Uh, and then maybe a pick or two for, for Thaddeus Young. So that's kind of what it would look like if, if that happened with Phoenix. Uh, maybe a type of trade. Uh, the Cleveland Cavaliers have also been reported to have interest in, in, in Thaddeus Young. And so maybe a, a trade that could look, again, to match salaries that might work for them might be like Chetty Osman, uh, Dylan Windler, and maybe a pick or two uh, as well for Thaddeus Young. And so, again, like I mentioned, you know, if the Spurs were to do that where they send Young to a team that's over the cap and they have to take back two players, well, then they find themselves in a very similar situation where they have too many players to get on the roster. Now, three interesting teams I, I wanted to look at because, um, you know, I went through every single team and I went through all the trade exceptions and I was trying to find out who can absorb Young's $14.1 million salary. And there's only three teams that can do that. That's the Boston Celtics, the New Orleans Pelicans, and the Orlando Magic. Now, all three of those teams have a, have a trade exception of $17 million. So they, they can basically uh, trade for Young and maybe send the Spurs just, um, you know, a picks maybe, a pick or two. And then they, the Spurs wouldn't have to take back any players on salary. Um, the, the problem though is that you know as somebody responded to me on twitter about this is that you know boston and new orleans might be trying to stay away from the luxury tax so they may not want to do that and then of course we know the magic are very much like the spurs they're, they're kind of in that developmental mode so they may not want to bring in a veteran player like thaddeus young so i know that's a lot of information mike you know what, what are some of your thoughts on, on these two situations the spurs find themselves in regarding trying to trade thaddeus young yeah i know th- the um <clears throat> first thing that came to mind is when everybody when that first um it came out about the Suns and everybody was talking about. I know Jalen Smith's been somebody that they've uh, has been talked about for a while, but I, I, you know, being able to make that happen, it would mm-hmm. obvi- it would probably require more players, which, which Spurs can't do right now because Jalen Smith makes about four four and a half million a year. I think um, that is his contract is somewhere around fifteen. So yeah, fourteen one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so getting that getting that to match, I mean, they'd have to throw in extra players, which one mm-hmm. they probably wouldn't want to do, and two, um, you know, uh, that, that means waving more players, so that's kind of yep. uh, a hard thing to get done. Um, the Jetty Austin thing, I, I feel like that seems like a Spurs type of guy that they, they'd be interested uh, in. Uh, it seemed, ever since I've, I've seen him in the league, you know, it seemed like to me a, a guy that maybe pop or front office would be kind of infatuated with because of you know, they have a, a Euro that can, you know, play 
uh, you know, a few different positions and things like that. But it, it's, it's, I think it's just going to be hard to find a trade partner unless, you know, they're able to get, you know, match somehow someone that has kind of a bloated salary or something because um, it, it really, I think, I don't think a lot of players are going to, or a lot of teams are going to be willing to give up, you know, most players that are in that salary range unless, like I said, they, they were given a hefty contract. And so uh, that's why I think that, you know, I wouldn't be too surprised if, if Young ends up starting the season off with the team, but um, mm-hmm. it's it's just going to be. I I think they really. I mean, that's another test. Kind of, if they really want to get him on another team, I mean, making that happen is going to be a challenge for sure for Brian Wright. Yeah, for sure. And you know, just you know, now that you're you're saying this out loud, you know, you're making me think in my head, you know, as well. Like you know, let's just say they do keep him, and let's just say they either trade Aminu and um and, and Hutchins into a team, or they waive both of them. And so then, so then you know, they start the season off, and Young's on the team. They're at the 15 players, and then they have their two two way players. And you know, it's going through, and then you know that that February trade deadline starts to get closer and closer. And they know that, and if it looks like you know they're not going to resign Young this off season, and then they're going to lose him for nothing, that's still a very difficult position because they're already their their roster's maxed out, and like you and I. Just mentioned, you know, unless it's to to um, New Orleans, uh, um, uh, who's the other one that I mentioned, Boston or Orlando. Yeah. If if, they're, if not, the, if the Spurs trade them to a, to a different team, you know, they're going to have to again match salaries. Now, there there may be other players out there who are kind of in that in that range of like twelve to fifteen million. So maybe they can do a one on one swap. But right now, you know, just with the teams that have been reported, uh, that's kind of who we're looking at right now: Phoenix and Cleveland. And and you know, there could be more teams. But for now, if it's if it's like where they have to take back two players again, that's very difficult. Like you mentioned, Mike, you know, just to, to make that happen. And and they do have. Up until the trade deadline to do that. So again, we'll kind of see what happens. And we do know though that you know before with these next four weeks before training camp starts, uh, and even during training camp, the Spurs do need to to either move some players or, or waive them because you know they have to have by October 18th. That's the deadline. They have to have their roster down to 15 players and two two way players. Let's go to get in our second topic right here, and this is a uh, you know Ben Simmons wants out of Philly. That's been all the, all the all the noise right now out on out on Twitter and in the media right now. Uh, so this is broken by um, the Philadelphia Inquirer. Um, uh, I think his name is uh, Keith Pompey or, or something Pompey, uh, the writer. Anyway, uh, he reported that Ben Simmons does want out of Philly. He's basically told management that he's told the coaching staff that, uh, and now even um, ESPN, um, ESPN's Brian Windhorst is reporting um, recently that that there's a chance that if um, you know. If Simmons doesn't show up to training camp, then there's a chance he might even try to hold out, um, you know, from from showing up for the season, and then um, yeah, and, and just not report to training camp. Uh, there was an interview Danny Green gave, who's who's a teammate of Ben Simmons, is with Philly, uh, where he basically discussed uh, Simmons as if he's pretty much going to be gone. Like basically, Danny was like already talking about, you know, what, they don't know which players they're going to get for him, what kind of position, if it's a point guard, a wing. So again, like like just the fact that some of his teammates are already already talking about him openly, like he's like he's going to be traded, looks like that's going to be the most likely route. Now again, there's no reporting right now that the Spurs are, are trying to get Simmons but we do know that in the past uh, around draft time they did have interest they at least according to different reports you know they, they did at least reach out to Philly and ask you know what do you want for what would be the package for Simmons and of course Philly's asking price right now is very high for Simmons it's that it's, it's what Woj said that Harden S package which is about four first round picks three pick swaps and a young player so again no teams are wanting to give Philly that for, for Simmons right now and, and they're waiting to see if they can uh, get that number down um you know, according to BetOnline.ag, one of the betting sites, uh, the Spurs are actually fifth as 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 far as being favorites to land Simmons behind um, Portland, Minnesota, Sacramento, and Golden State. Uh, you know, if we we break if we break apart some of these teams and their chances of getting Simmons, we know that the Blazers are definitely uh, in play only if they're willing to to let Dame go. So again, Dame hasn't asked for a trade yet, but if Lillard were to ask for a trade, well, then obviously you know that's pretty much what everybody's reporting is that uh, Philly and, and and Portland could get together on a deal. Uh, you know, maybe who knows? Maybe maybe Philly uh, if, if if Simmons doesn't show up to training camp, maybe Philly, there's more pressure on Philly to trade him. So maybe Philly will be willing to to, to trade for CJ McCollum and let Dame stay in Portland. You know, who, who knows in that situation. Uh, the Kings have basically distanced themselves, according to different reporting from the Athletic, where they basically don't want to include uh, De'Aaron Fox or Tyrese Halliburton in any kind of deal for Simmons, so they're kind of dis- distancing themselves. The the Timberwolves are very interested, according to the Athletic, but they really don't have the players for Simmons, unless you know Philly took back um, maybe D'Angelo Russell. But right now, it doesn't look like, like that would be enough for Philly. And then the last team, the Warriors, have also basically kind of distanced themselves as well from 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 you know being being um, active in, in, the, in the discussions for for Simmons. So again, you know the chances there uh, for the Spurs. So what are your th- thoughts, Mike, on, on Ben actually saying you know he wants out for sure? He might even hold out for training camp, and then you know the Spurs still being one of those teams that, that might have some interest. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> it's interesting because uh, he seems to be 
almost like uh, tanking his trade value a little bit by coming mm-hmm. out and saying this, but it doesn't seem like Daryl Morey is bothered by any of this at all because it seems like his package he wants in exchange is still a big ask. And I don't know if, if I think he might have some trouble getting that type of package in exchange, especially if Ben is coming out and saying this. I, I kind of wonder where it's like the um, Kawhi Leonard situation where teams will wonder, you know, like, um, you know, if, if that's going to be a problem for the next team that he goes to. Yeah. Um, I mean, he's had success in Philadelphia. What if he goes to a team like Minnesota who hasn't had much success? And then you kind of wonder, like, if that's going to be just a, a stop, that, you know, before he ends up moving on to, you know, some other team or, or lands in, in free agency. I think he's only got, like, what, one, one year left on his contract. So it, it's, it's, uh, it has become just a one year rental at that time. You know, I know a lot of the Spurs fan base really wants Ben Simmons, but making that happen, it, it, I mean, you have to like hemorrhage like a lot of your young core to even make that happen, and then your future pick. So then you're pretty much banking on Ben Simmons being the guy that's going to, you know, lead the team, and you're kind of making a bet on Simmons to to take over kind of this franchise, and yeah. um, is that who you want to build the entire, you know, franchise around? And so... It has a big uh, effect, I think, on on the future. And um, if it's a guy that you're kind of questioning whether he's going to stick around, and that becomes uh, really hard because I think the Spurs really want to. They don't. They don't want to have another situation like they've had before, and they they want to try to start building for like future, like continued success, and not just a short term type of thing. So this is another one that I'm. I, I'm going to be kind of surprised if it gets done before training camp. Okay, yeah, and this is an interesting one because, you know, um, a few, f- you know, just weeks ago or maybe even months ago, Colin and I, Colin Reed and I went back and forth on this. And, and so, like, on paper, you're right, Mike. Like, you know, this is a player, Ben Simmons, who, who's an all-NBA level player, uh, an all-star. And, again, the Spurs are just, you know, right now in their situation, it doesn't look like they're going to they're gonna get a player like that right now. So trade would probably be the best route. You know, right now, according to um, Profit X's projections, you know, none of their young players right now, um, you know, showed to be on, 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 on track to becoming an all-star uh, at, at this point in their careers. So, again, you know, if, if on paper, Ben Simmons is that play, that rare player who, who the Spurs could get right now. But like you're saying, Mike, you know, he might be tanking his his, his value in terms of just the kind of you know the kind of personality if he actually ends up holding out. Um, it was funny because on, on, on one of the betting sites, uh, they had they had the Shanghai Sharks as like one of the one of the teams you could bet on for him to play on because you know in the in the event he doesn't even show up to training camp and basically sits out the season, you know, the, they were looking you know, maybe he goes and plays with the Shanghai Sharks, you know, according to that to that project that uh, that, that betting odds. So so that's interesting to watch. Um, this thing else I was going to mention, but I, but I completely forgot. Oh, he has like three years on his deal, and then I think D'Lo um, Russell has like like a year. So yeah, so that's the thing is like if you do trade for him, you do get him on a long term deal. But uh-huh. you're right, Mike. You know what if he's not happy? What if he's not happy on a young team like the Spurs or or, or the Timberwolves? You know, and then, and then he wants out of there, and then he, like you you mentioned, you know, they they already went through the, the, all the drama with Kawhi a few years ago. So you know that's something that, something interesting to watch. And you know, um, again, I, I know we've we've discussed Ben Simmons over and over on the Spurs cast, and the reason why is because um, you know until he gets moved officially, you know we're going to have to basically continue to to look at any time a rumor pops up with him because again the Spurs were a team that we know earlier this summer actually you know inquired about him so again until he actually gets moved to a different team we're gonna we're gonna continue to kind of revisit anytime there's some different rumors uh, regarding Ben Simmons all right, so our last topic, let's go ahead and look at some projection numbers for the cap space for the Spurs next summer. So the reason why I want to visit this now is because now that Jock Landale and Bryn Forbes have officially signed their deals, we basically know who all the players on guaranteed salary uh, will be for the season and, and how their deals are going to look. So, you know, Landale got, got a guaranteed deal for this season at the veteran minimum. The next year, his deal is non-guaranteed. Bryn Forbes' deal came out, um, you know, right after we recorded the last Spurs cast. Uh, and so he did get, like we projected, you know, the most of the room exception, $4.5 million out of that $4.9 million room room exception and it's a fully guaranteed one-year deal so next year uh, Bryn Forbes next offseason Bryn Forbes will be a, an, an unrestricted free agent so what does this mean for the Spurs and their cap space well the Spurs right now you know with the numbers that we have we know that they can open as much as 32.9 million dollars in salary cap space next summer now this that, that some things would have to be in play here to get to that number they would have to waive all their non-guaranteed players so this is like um, uh, Drew Eubanks this is like Trey Jones this is Zach Collins Collins, this is uh, Jock Landale. So they'd have to let go of a number of, of non guaranteed players. They'd have to let their free agents walk. So this is, um, you know, Lonnie Walker the fourth is is the big name who's going to be in free agency next year if he doesn't sign an extension. And then also this 
is assuming they get the sixth pick in the draft, and the reason why I say sixth pick is because that's the, that's where they're projected to, to be in the in the lottery this year. If you know if they don't play as well, uh, a, a, you know, if they don't surpass their um their their expectations for over under uh, in wins. Now um, that number will shrink that thirty two point nine million dollars in cap space if, of course, um you know they keep some of those players on non guaranteed deals next 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 off season. If they resign Lonnie or um you know he gets an extension this coming this coming off season, and of course also if the pick is even better uh, than sixth. Uh, uh, let's say it's it's like fifth or fourth or third. Uh, then then it's gonna it's gonna be a higher amount on on, the, on your cap. So um, you know with thirty two point nine million dollars in cap space, they would basically be able to send out a max contract to to a very young player, a player who only has zero to six years of experience. They would take themselves out of where they were this past off season, where they could have offered to like a veteran player with seven to ten years of experience. So that's no longer in play based on this number right now. So I, I know I know it's you know we're not gonna discuss who's in free agency for, for until you know next off season. But um, Mike, what are your thoughts on this? The fact that they could open up um you know about 33 million dollars in cap space next off season yeah i mean i think the whole zero to six years uh, part is kind of um important because then that's like determining a value for a player that's not in that uh you know area right now i mean you're looking at guys like zach levine might mm-hmm. be for, maybe get that type of a jump um i mean there's there's some players like uh uh bridges from phoenix that i don't think you know even after this year, he would be in that in that range yet. So uh, it would definitely be interesting. And then I think also the fact that um, a lot of part of that hinges on Lonnie Walker, not him, not getting an, yep. an extension, and um, would they be willing to move on from him? And I feel like this is kind of the year where he's kind of taken, uh, like last season, took a step forward, and will need to take another one. I think before they do that. And then I'm I'm kind of wondering like how much, you know how much his value will be worth if you start looking at like DeJounte Murray and Derek White and where he might come in and how much of the cap room he eats up and then what does that leave left over so I mean obviously you're not going to get one of the big name free agents that's coming up like a Bill or a Harden or anything like that so um, it's it's just a it's, it's another I guess the team would stay young but obviously I don't know if you have that player in mind that is a a franchise changer um, next off season. Yeah, for sure, I agree with you. And like and like I said, you know, I, I don't I don't even think they would they would waive a lot of those players on non guaranteed deals. Like like maybe somebody like Zach Collins, I think he ends up staying next mm-hmm. next off season unless he's like really really hurt and he can he can't recover uh, health wise. Also like like you mentioned, Mike, you know the fact that if if Lonnie either gets an extension this off season or maybe he maybe he accepts his qualifying offer for, for um to you know to return to the Spurs on, on one more year and then he be, he can become an unrestricted free agent the, the following year. So again, oh, there's a lot of factors in here. But just to let you all Spurs cast listeners know, you know right now where they stand, you know they could open as much as thirty three million dollars in cap space but th- that hinges on a lot of different factors uh playing out in, in the course of this coming year so thanks for listening to this, for this spurs cast episode don't forget to visit projectspurs.com uh you know i have that article i referenced earlier the spurs offseason questions that i looked at uh we also have one uh, a new article by benjamin bornstein where he said uh, it's called the the big men and their big names to know in the 2022 nba draft and like i just mentioned right now you know there is a chance if the spurs play like their Vegas um, projection shows, they could end up with a sixth pick in the draft, a top 10 pick here. Now, obviously, if they play better than that, well, then they're going to end up probably back in the late lottery or, or not even in the lottery at all. So, so again, we'll kind of see, and that's going to be an interesting, uh, that's an interesting article to read there from Ben. So thanks again to Mike for joining me here on the Spurs Cast and for mixing this episode. From all of us at Project Spurs, stay safe and have a great day.